you're back. That must mean that you enjoy my content. And if that's so, please hit that like button and subscribe. I'm back to doing this daily now, so keep checking back for new videos. These people are being egged on sure. by right-wing media and people like Alex Jones and Rush Limbaugh. And why are you bringing guns to a rally? It, you want to call yourself protesters, keep, leave your guns home. Those are terrorists who bring guns to things, to rallies. I don't trust that and at so, all. As usual, the media is piling on the Tea Party-esque anti-lockdown protests that are occurring, calling them racist because somebody had a bad flag, demonizing them because they're open caring, and just generally trying to discredit them. We literally see this playbook anytime anyone other than left-wingers or Democrats are protesting. To see what I'm talking about, just check out this media mashup from 2011 showing the media comparing the Tea Party to terrorists. These people are crazy. There's 8 to 15 to perhaps 20 members of the Tea Party influenced wing of the Republican Party in the House who are crazy. They are crazy. Yeah, these are people that don't believe in evolution of global warming, so why are they going to believe that default would hurt anything? I mean, you're not dealing with, like, rational people here. I mean, look, come on. They've strapped uh, explosives to the Capitol, and they think they are immune from it. These Tea Party guys are, like, strapped with dynamite, standing in the middle of Times Square at rush hour, and saying either you do it my way or we're going to blow you up, ourselves up, and the whole country up with us. Keep, leave your guns home. Those are terrorists who bring guns to things to rallies. I don't trust that and at so, all. Did she just say that terrorists are people who bring guns to things? That's a really odd and vague thing to say. She has armed security, right? Are they terrorists? We'll get right into this episode, but first I just want to remind everyone that while it may look like things are returning to normal, there's a very good possibility that these lockdowns will continue into next year. And if that happens, it's more likely that we're all going to have to deal with food shortages. Don't just wait and hope that things are going to work out. Be proactive and make sure that you and your family won't have to worry about food shortages. And I trust and use my Patriot Supply. You can too. Take action so you're ready for what's coming and save $70. Those that know what's coming are preparing. Go to preparewithdronetech.com prepare with drone tech.com yes she just called american citizens who are exercising their constitutional and lawful rights terrorists this is the same woman who said this but they should not tell everything they're going to do like if you're going to take people's guns away wait till you get elected then take the guns away yeah. first off let me just say that i think whoever's organizing these rallies needs to make sure that everybody's got masks ppe and is observing the six foot distance from each other why not take that weapon away from the media when we do go back to work, it's probably going to be a good idea, at least for a couple weeks, to wear masks and appropriate PPE. If the protesters did this, it would show that they're serious about going to work and being cautious. In my mind, this is a good compromise. However, calling American citizens terrorists for exercising their rights is treasonous on its own. There's nothing new at all about pro-Second Amendment protesters showing up to rallies lawfully armed. They've been doing this since at least the Tea Party era during the Obama administration, so you would think that if these people were actually terrorists or bad people wishing to do harm, that there would have been some examples of it occurring within the last 20 years. What really disturbed me was uh, the president's tweets. You know, you have the president saying things like liberate Virginia, uh, and then also in the same sentence, bringing up the Second Amendment. And I think, you know, he's in a sense implying an incited insurrection. Uh, he's, you know, I think the argument can be made that he is inciting violence by these tweets. Inciting violence? You know what incites violence? Calling American citizens terrorists or an existential threat claiming without any evidence that they're somehow against brown and black people, which incites fear and paranoia. When you do that, you're giving crazy people like those in Antifa all the justification that they need to take action. For example, Democrats and their media calling border detention facilities concentration camps, something that The View took part in, leading to multiple attacks on ICE facilities. Yet were any of these parties ever accused of inciting violence? No, of course not. Nothing Trump tweeted incited violence. His tweets were clear as day. He wants the country to open back up. There's no calls for violence. You would only infer that if your brain is warped by the constant drumbeat of DNC propaganda from so-called news networks. There's no question these are not organic protests. Organized by the Michigan Conservative Coalition, which was essentially an early uh, you know, group that organized the, the Tea Party movement really almost a decade ago. John, the reality is these are not organic protests. We saw them across the country. Uh, yes, many of them came because 
uh, you know, they just wanted to protest. Uh, you know, they were supporting President Trump. They were supporting a variety of, uh, of issues, uh, you know, pro-militia, anti-vaxxer, uh, pro-life, other things. But this systematic organization we're seeing in capitals across the country is no doubt being organized by a loose connection of groups uh, that is very reminiscent of the Tea Party group, like I said, from about a decade or so. So this is not uh, something that's happened organically. During these first 100 days, what has surprised you the most about this office, enchanted you the most about serving in this office, humbled you the most, and troubled you the most. Now, let me write this down. Surprise, he's an Obama hack. That's going to be the talking point from the media going forward, that these protests aren't organic. And notice how this fake reporter breaks down all the separate interests that are represented in these protests as a way of discrediting them. When do we hear any of this during left-wing or Democrat Party protests? The Women's March, for example, was really just an anti-Trump Democrat Party protest, with dozens of different interests represented, including plenty of hammer and sickle flags, yet somehow those people don't tarnish the entire march as communist. It's just a another example of how the media enforces double standards to give their political agenda the advantage. Just look at how CNN covered the anti-Obama Tea Party protests compared to this. Well, you know, Kara, uh, this is a, a party for Obama bashers. I have to say that this is not entirely representative of everybody in America. This was organized by three different conservative groups. And if you look at some of the signs, Kara, let me, let me introduce you to this guy. Uh, would you come over here with me, please? You know, what is this supposed to mean? What What do you mean by that? Well, I mean, he's a fascist. The pirates... Wait, why do you say he's pirates, a fascist? He's the president yeah, of the United States. He's a fascist. Do you, do you realize how uh, Do you realize how offensive that is? I, All right. Uh, let's see. Drop the taxes. Drop socialism. Okay, let's see. You're here with your two-year-old. What does this have to do with taxes? What does this have to do with your taxes? Do you realize that you're eligible for a $400 credit? finish my point. You get the general tenor of this. Uh, it's anti-government, anti-CNN, since this is highly promoted by the right-wing conservative network Fox. So, yeah, it's an old playbook being used again to discredit the political opposition to the Democrat Party. Over at ABC, former Clinton administration official and Democrat Party operative George Stephanopoulos encouraged Facebook to censor anyone posting about these protests and very China-style censorship tactics to stifle dissent. So how do you deal with the fact that Facebook is now being used to organize a lot of these protests to defy social distancing, defy the social distancing? guidelines in states. We do classify that as harmful misinformation and we take that down. No, no. There's nothing at all wrong with a well-known DNC operative posing as a journalist to encourage CCP-style censorship of his political opposition in the public square. It's totally normal, not objectively unethical and corrupt. <laughs> Stephanopoulos says, how do you deal with the fact that Facebook is now being used to organize a lot of these protests that defy social distancing, defy the social distancing guidelines in states? Here's a quick lesson for you, George. Guidelines don't trump the Constitution. In fact, I'm skeptical about any real lawful backing behind these guidelines. To enforce a law, you need some sort of a threshold to break, but we don't even know what thresholds they're using to enforce these guidelines. It's all very murky and suspect, which is why these protests exist in the first place place. That's all for this episode. Please hit that like button, share, and subscribe. As always, if you want to support this channel, you can do so on one of these platforms. You can find all those links in the description and pinned comment. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back.